What do you do when you beg and God is silent? Some of you feel that right now this morning. Some of you have been there. You've, you don't have a job. You've lost your job. Some of you have friends who have continually stabbed your, you in the back. Some of you have children who are wayward, who don't believe the gospel, who you raised to know, love, and fear Jesus. Some of you took those same vows that the Ciprianos and the Munches took here this morning, and you took those vows, and you honored those vows, and your children still walked away from the faith. Some of you have cancer, some of you have have diseases, some of you have broken marriages, some of you are just broken and depressed. And you beg God, you beg God, and it just sounds like he's silent. What do you do? This woman was in your place. She's begging. Jesus hears her and doesn't respond. You know, we don't like to be persistent because we think we're being annoying. Like I said about the toddlers who ask 400 questions a day, we don't want to take our requests to God. We maybe don't think that they're important enough to God. But the kingdom of heaven is for those like this woman who are willing to spend untiring energy in pursuit of spiritual things. That's a persistent faith. Think about the gospel, the men who had the paralytic friend where Jesus is teaching at Peter's house and they can't get into the house, so they rip the house open, 18 inches of mud and of of tree leaves and wood, and they rip it open in order to lower their friend down. They were persistent. Think about the parable that Jesus tells about the widow who is before the judge, who wants time before the judge, and she is persistent until the judge finally says, you're going to kill me with these requests. Jesus delights in a persistent faith that is insistent upon God answering. What areas in your life demonstrate persistence? Now, I'm not just talking about you going home and saying, okay, I'm going to lose 15 pounds now and I'm going to be persistent. I'm not talking about you setting some kind of temporal goals. Those things are all good, setting exercise goals, setting financial goals and all those things. I'm not talking about a general principle of persistence. I'm talking about a, a, a gospel-compelled, gospel-foundation uh, persistence, persistent faith. What are you persistent about in your life? Is it faith? Is it your children's faith? I was talking to one man a couple weeks ago who said, I have failed my son. I haven't taught him. I haven't spent time with him. Some of you might be feeling that way. Well, be persistent with them. Spend time with them. Every single night, For the most part with my kids, I have to be persistent with them. So persistent with Caleb over the past six years of his life where I've taught him the catechism as I've shared with you. And I'm not trying to beat this to death, but I think it's so important. And I got to see a little piece of that reward the other night as I'm sharing the catechism with him again. And Joven, who sleeps on the the bottom bunk, is listening to all this. And I walked out of the room and was outside the room coming back again. And I heard Caleb saying to Joven, what is the chief end of man? And him then doing what I did with with Caleb, saying, Caleb saying, to glorify God. Say it, Joven, say it. And Joven in his little voice saying, to glorify God. That takes persistence. A faithful persistence that God will honor that someday. you got to be persistent in your faith. The Lord celebrates a hungry, a desperate, a violent faith, if you will. Jesus says that the, the people who are part of the kingdom of God are taking it by force. You know what he means? He's saying you have a violent faith. You'll run through brick walls to be persistent in that faith. So when God is silent... Be persistent.